Good morning, this is your Stats Sensei, Mr. Spensei, and we're going to look at uh, classical probability. And the first problem we're going to look at is a 1999 question number five. And this problem is a good problem for sample space. Uh, usually should make a sample space if you're doing something twice um, or have two variables. Here we're rolling two die, so let's take a look at this. Die A has four nines and two zeros on its faces. Die B has four threes and two elevens on its faces. So we're rolling two die, and whenever we do that, I like to set up a sample space. When either of these dice is rolled, each face has an equal chance of landing on the top. Two players are going to play the game. The first player selects a die and rolls it. Uh, the second player rolls the remaining die. The winner is a player whose die has a higher number. Suppose you are the first player and you want to win the game. Which die would you select? In other words, which one has a greater likelihood of winning? So I'd go about setting a sample space up. And you could set it up a couple different ways. I'm going to go ahead and call this side die A. And with die A, I could get a zero, a zero, and I could also get one of four nines. Then I also have die B. And with die B, I could get either one of two threes, actually four threes, and one of two 11s. So it takes a little while to do this, but it's usually worthwhile. Or maybe I should say this, it is worthwhile because if you make the sample space, you almost always get the problem correctly. Problems kind of fall into place if you take the time to make a sample space. So take practice. And this one's a little more challenging, I think, to make because it's not the same die that you normally use. But if you practice with the other, making the other die, this one isn't too horrible, still not a lot of fun. And, but we can go ahead and get this thing done. And I'm gonna take the time to do it. I know you're gonna to have to listen to me ramble for a moment as I kill time talking about this thing. And by the way, I know you're probably asking yourself, well, once I see who's winning, do I really have to do the whole thing? And the answer is maybe. Uh, or probably not, but I would go ahead and take the time to do it. And the reason why is you don't want to lose a point just because you saved a half a minute or a minute of your actual work. So I would go ahead and set up the whole thing. And if you put die B here, die A there, it wouldn't really matter. All right, so we have um, the sample space made. Well, if you rolled a zero, you automatically lost. If you rolled a 11, you automatically won. So when did die A win? Well, they won when nine, when a nine was rolled and a three was rolled. Well, that happens to be this group right here. This is when die A won. Well, that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So die A wins nine out of 16 times. I mean, nine out of 36 times, die A, probability of winning is nine out of 36, probability of die A. And the probability of die B equals, well, if it's nine out of 36, then this is going to, um, die B is um, nine out of 36. I'm sorry about that. I can't count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 16 out of 36. So die A wins 16 out of 36 times. And die B wins 20 out of 36 times. So real quickly, I'm going to choose die B because they, they have a greater probability of winning. Um, these do reduce, and it's probably not a bad idea to reduce them since they reduce to the same thing, to the same denominator. Choose die B. Why? And make sure you always explain why, because the question was, which die would you select? Justify your answer. Choose die B because it has a five-ninths chance 
or probability of winning while die A only has a four ninths chance of winning. So we choose die B because their probability of winning is five ninths versus die A of four ninths. Okay, now um, really important that you have all that work shown. So you showed your sample space, you got your probabilities, and then you actually answered the question defining it in probability. All right, part B. Suppose the player used die A received 45 categories, 45 tokens each time he or she wins. So how many do we expect them to win? We, we expect them to go, oh, we expect them to win. Because remember, expected value is NP. Well, they get 45 times the probability of winning. So that's how many we expect them to win. All right, so that's what we expect A to, that's for A. So how many tokens must the player use die B each time if he or she wins in order for this to be a fair game? In other words, we want to equalize the game because right now it's not fair. We know that die B has a greater chance of winning. What's the, how do we make this an equal game if die A gets 45? Well, the answer is we're going to go 45 times four nines because that's the how many we expect them to get. And we don't know how many to give die B, but we know the probability of winning is five ninths. So we go about solving that, just basic algebra. And I'm going to pause because I don't have my basic algebra machine. In other words, my calculator. But give me just a OK, so we're back with calculate the, the machine to calculate things because I can't do the math. So 45 times four divided by nine, so 20. So 20 equals X times five ninths. And I'm just gonna basically multiply by the reciprocal. So times nine divided by five, and I end up getting X equals 36. So B should get, 36 tokens to make a fair game. In other words, what we're saying is we know that B has a greater chance of winning because they have a greater chance of winning. Um, we're going to give the, the prize will be smaller. All right, if you had all of that, you get a four. Um, uh, four points on that. All right. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.